Hi friends, you are back with me, Professor Girish Kukreja, your friend for biology, biotechnology, microbiology, biochemistry and much more. Uh, today we are here to discuss about uh, the Nobel Prize which was recently declared uh, the 2023 Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine, Physiology or Medicine which was awarded to, uh, yes we all know that, that is uh, Kathleen Carrico and Drew Weissman. Uh, the two scientists, the, the two laureates actually work with modified basis of mRNA and they help us to understand that how this particular modified base mRNA helps our immune system to interact and how our immune system interacts differently with these modified mRNA bases and this eventually helped to develop the vaccine against one of the greatest threat to the modern times which we had, the greatest threat to humanity that is the COVID-19, yes. So talking about vaccine, now as we all know that vaccine is not something uh, which has come up like right now but it has been with us, with humanity since long. Now since its inception, like the first vaccine which we all know uh, was uh, by that Edward Jenner, yeah. You all remember the story of smallpox. Even we before could know that what a virus is, uh, we had successfully, the humanity at large, the people like Jenner at large had developed the vaccine against smallpox. So we have been working with these vaccines uh, even before the pandemic, right? And these were generally the vaccines which included uh, the viruses uh, which were killed, the viruses which were either weakened or attenuated, yeah. You could recall some of the vaccines which we all have taken like the polio, the measles, right? And the, these all, yes, the yellow fever one, the 1951, uh, we know uh, the Nobel Prize was uh, to Max Thiller who came up with the vaccine for this uh, yellow fever, right? So thanks to this uh, modern molecular biology methods, the biotechnology methods where we have been now trying to prepare vaccines which do not include the entire virus, uh, they do not uh, include the entire pathogenic agent but we could now make vaccines uh, to the parts of that particular virus which are actually antigenic. So now we could use uh, what you call as the proteins, the only protein parts of the virus which could elicit a particular immune response. Yes, a much safer version I suppose. Yeah, uh, you all are well aware of these vaccines which are already in use, the hepatitis B vaccines, the human papilloma virus vaccines where we have been uh, using the parts only of these particular uh, what you call as viruses. Uh, then we again by step one more further we went and we, we developed vaccines where uh, we could uh, what you call as uh, use a vector. You could, you could only use the part of that viral genetic code now which is coding for these particular uh, what you call as uh, proteins which are antigenic. Now this small part of this uh, viral genetic code. Uh, which earlier we used the directly that particular virus now you want to use this viral genetic code and transfer it to some another virus which is uh, harmless right uh, which is your friend probably and you take this uh, particular genetic code and transfer it to some another carrier virus which we refer to as and this is this carrier virus which is going to uh, transmit this code to your cells Right, the one which we used for developing vaccines against Ebola, right. So we uh, took this and uh, our target cells were now uh, what you call as producing these um, virus uh, antigenic uh, proteins and our immune system could uh, later recognize the actual target virus, right, wonderful. So vaccines have went through a, a large what you call as change. We, we went through uh, uh, entire virus, uh, we went through a small protein, uh, we went through these uh, vectors, right? But then all of these, whether it is a virus, uh, whether it is a vector virus or whether it is the small proteinaceous particles of these virus, all were based on uh, what you call as uh, the cell culture systems, a very uh, laboratory intensive methods where we need to prepare a lot of cell cultures and we need to uh, work more and it was very difficult for us to prepare a vaccine uh, when we are faced with such pandemics like we faced uh, the current pandemic of COVID-19. So uh, people were now working on some another methods. Now it was uh, I think around 1980s where people came up with the idea of uh, preparing mRNA Right, you have heard of this mRNA, right? We, we know that the genetic material is DNA and then we have this mRNA uh, which is carrying the information for these particular proteins. So, uh, we, we started synthesizing this mRNA in vitro. Yeah, without, uh, without the need of uh, what you call as uh, cell cultures. 
so yes it was a very drastic change which was really really wonderful and this helped us to identify uh, what you call as uh, prepare these mrna without cell cultures so less labor intensive uh, but then there were challenges right uh, delivering this mrna directly uh, was a challenge like you, you require a uh, sophisticated delivery systems uh, we developed what you call as various rapid uh, delivery systems for it and another thing was that uh, these particular molecules were very unstable so people were working they were not very sure that whether this mrna could actually be used as a therapeutic agent in near future so many people had uh, given up on using this mrna for any kinds of therapeutics or any kinds of uh, development of vaccine uh, but then yes we all don't lose hope and it is the hope that wins and this is what happened with uh, this Hungarian biochemist uh, Kathleen Kariko who was very sure that it was this mRNA which is going to somehow be very very useful to uh, develop the therapeutics and vaccines but people were not very sure uh, Kathleen, Dr. Kathleen as she says that uh, she tried for getting funds but then people were not very much convinced she she found it very difficult to get funds for uh, what you call as development of these particular mRNA based therapeutics and uh, it was at this uh, point of time where she met her colleague, a new colleague now, uh, an immunologist, Drew Weissman. And it was this Drew Weissman who was also having similar interests, right? So we say that like attracts like. <laughs> so it was this Drew Weissman who was working with dendritic cells. And he was amazed at working that how these dendritic cells, they are involved in the immune surveillance how these dendritic cells, they are involved in uh, what you call as the reaction of our immune system when uh, a particular pathogen it enters our body. And when these two collaborated together, they worked a lot and they were exploring the ways and means by which mRNA could be used for these therapeutics, right? And then uh, they thought that uh, what is happening actually, well, it was found that uh, if you take a in vitro synthesized mRNA, right, without uh, these cell cultures and all, and you inject it into or uh, what you call it, insert it into these uh, dendritic cells, the dendritic cells did not respond very normally. The dendritic cells, they were producing an inflammatory response, a major hurdle. Um, this was not true with uh, the mRNA which was produced by the mammalian cells. And therefore, um, these they started thinking the Karyoko, Karyko and uh, Weissman both of these they were now at a uh, point where they were wondering that why this mRNA uh, which is synthesized artificially is making the dendritic cells give a response which is uh, an inflammatory kind of a response which is not a normal response but this was not happening with the mRNA which was being synthesized in the mammalian cells. Uh, probably when they searched back and they found that it was uh, these mRNAs from the mammalian cells which actually had uh, some modified bases, right? We, we all have studied this that uh, mRNA or rRNAs in general or tRNAs, they have many modified bases, right? And it was these modified bases probably which they missed out. And it was at this point when uh, Kathleen uh, and uh, um, Drew, they, they came up with the idea that why not modify uh, these particular bases and then insert it uh, into the dendritic cells. And great to their amazing response, they found that they were right. Once you modify these mRNAs, the dendritic cells were now responding normally. And it was these particular discovery. Uh, if you think that this was happening right in, in the period of pandemic, then you are wrong. <laughs> it was happening long back in 2005. They published these results that a modified mRNA base, when it is introduced in the dendritic cell, was now responding normally. Now you are out of the major hurdle which was there for using this mRNA as a therapeutic agent. Wonderful. We never had thought that this could happen, but it was the thought of this Kathleen and uh, Weissman who came up with the idea that yes, modified mRNA bases could overcome the major hurdle. And long back, 15 years back before uh, this particular pandemic. So uh, we, we always think that uh, we work when uh, we are actually faced with the problem, but no, people are working day and night. It, it, it was uh, the dream of uh, Karyoko and uh, Weissman to come up with something new. And uh, later, they didn't stop there. In 2008 and in 2010, they also found that it was this modified mRNA when it was introduced into these cells, 
um, they could also uh, give a larger amount of protein like when we were using the unmodified mrna the amount of protein which was produced was also very very less so the second major hurdle in using this mrna as the therapeutics was again now gone so the two basic hurdles that is your inflammatory response and second the less production both were overcome by this time so by 2010 it was now very popular what you call as an agent to be used as a therapeutic one yes and we used it uh, it was used against the zika virus it was used against uh, for mers covid yes you you got it right mers covid one of the uh, virus were very very uh, related to the sars cov2 uh, which threatened us and um, uh, which 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 was a major challenge in front of humanity and it was this idea of using this modified mrna basis was then picked up and we could immediately come up and you would be surprised that we started this the pandemic started early is in uh, march 2020 and uh, uh, some of the vaccines were already approved for use by december 2020 and was not possible uh, if this earlier work uh, which was uh, by done by carico and uh, weissman that uh, so unprecedented rate of vaccine development could be achieved so thanks to these Nobel laureates who uh, gave this idea many other technologies came up for development of these particular vaccines and many other vaccines came into picture and by now uh, around the globe people around 13 billion people have received the shots of this SARS COVID-19 vaccine and we are now safe and uh, all is due to the work of this uh, uh, Kathleen Carrico and Drew Beesman. So like this was a, a general uh, what you call as a video where we tried to summarize uh, the work of Weissman and Carrico. Uh, we'll be coming up with a more elaborate and a more simpler version of this video because this was based on uh, the basic understanding that you have a basic knowledge of microbiology and biotechnology. Stay tuned with me Professor Girish Kukreja for a more elaborate video on uh, how this particular vaccine it was developed. So thank you so much.